It's an amazing reality that we could actually be set free from ourselves. That the fear of man doesn't grip us. I got to get free of me before I can get free of you. But when that happens, man, can you walk this thing out? You'll find yourself being unoffendable. Every time I think I'm unoffendable, some idiot comes along and messes it up. We can do this thing, right, church? Come on, we can do this thing. I believe that. I believe it. I believe it. I, I'm, I'm so excited about what I believe God is raising up in this hour. It's a good day. It's an exciting time. He loves us, man. And it's just... I, I actually believe the key to the victory for the body of Christ is the deeper revelation of how much he loves us. It's not about us loving him. I don't think the church has had a problem with loving God for years. It's receiving his love and actually allowing him to love us so that we can really walk fully in that. Because I can't give away what I don't possess, but if I can receive his love, I can walk in it. And that's a big deal to me. God's doing amazing things. Feel good? Everybody doing good? Listen, we had, a, we had such a great time in the first service, and I know the first service kind of ran into the second service, and so we've started a little bit late. But, but I'm telling you, it's worth it. Hang tight with us. It's going to get hot. It's just good things. It's already, there's such a beautiful atmosphere, man. It's an atmosphere of heaven. And it's just continuing to, 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 to step fully and completely into all that he has for us. Thanks, guys. We're good. Thank you, guys. It's so good. Um, I'll do this with you. I think we're all growing. And the, and the beautiful thing is that it doesn't matter how long you serve God or how many places you go or what all happens, we're still growing in revelation. We're still growing in our understanding. And the truth of the matter is it's my desire I, I, I've told the church for years now, I'm going to live to be 100. I'm not going to be sick one day in my life, and then I'm just going to lay down, go to sleep, and wake up with Jesus, and I'm okay with that, and, and, and I'm good with that. But if I live to be 100 and that happens, and I believe it's going to, I still think at 99 and a half, I'm still getting new revelation. Why? Because there's so much more of the multifaceted understanding of God and how big he really is, and we continue to grow in that. My revelation of God probably increases so much more when we're walking through challenges than it is when you're not walking through challenges. See, when you say, God, I want to experience you more, I want to know you more, it may put you up in a place where you're going to walk through some tough places, right? Because it's in the tough places that my revelation grows. It's in the tough places that my understanding grows. It's in the tough places that my, there's, a, there's a deepening of my understanding of his goodness, in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. Who, I, I read that in a book somewhere. It's a, it's a good book. <laughs> Sometimes it's walking through those tough places that we just really learn what it is to trust and to lean on God. Uh, the young man I'm about to introduce to you, a lot of you know him. You know his story. He's been walking through a tough place in the, in the midst of, uh, of the understanding his wife uh, about a little over four months ago, got diagnosed with a cancer. Uh, the They've been walking through it. There's been some really good reports along the way, but how many know, even in the midst of it, there's still incredible challenges, right? Come on, and there is. And, and I, I so appreciate even that. And I'll share this. I think it's okay to share this, but when I, when I first found out what was going on, I called and contacted Will, and I said, talk to me, man, what's going on? The word that he said was so incredible to me because listen to what he said. He said, my head is spinning, but my faith isn't shaken. That, that speaks volumes to me. I don't know if you remember telling me that was exactly the word. word that's a word for word quote. That's a Will Hartism, okay? <laughs> but but uh, but, uh, but but watch. My head is spinning, but my faith isn't shaken. I'm, we're going to walk through this. It's going to be okay. How many know? There's times when your head spins. Come on, there's times when your head spins, but you got to keep that core. You got to keep that core. Absolutely. Let not your heart be troubled. He didn't say not let not your head be troubled. He said let not your heart be troubled. Why? Because sometimes your head gets troubled, but don't let it shake you to the core. 
Sometimes your head will spin, but don't let that shake your, your, your core values and what you do understand. I can never allow what I don't understand to keep me from walking in what I do understand. I'm still called to walk this thing out. And I've watched him do this with incredible grace. And I'm excited to see what God's going to do in the end of this whole thing and the glory that he's going to get from it. But we'll continue to keep walking and pressing with him. A little while ago, we just took an offering. And let me share this with you real quick if I can. Um, we did an offering, and, and, and we'll, we'll write Will a check. And all of Will's offerings go through a, a, a ministry called Global Awakening, and then they just pay him a salary out of that. But there's a place where I felt like as a local church, because we love this guy, he's ministered to our house so many different times in different places. I just consider him a personal friend. I absolutely love his heart. I love what he's doing for the body of Christ. He's preached in, would you tell me, 46 countries? A whole bunch of places, okay, <laughs> shared the gospel all over the world. God's used him, raised him up, and he's a voice for the church in this hour, and I love what God's doing in him. Uh, I'm sure he'll share some of the things that he's been able to see and experience. But in the midst of all that, what I'd say to this is, is, is real simple. We've already done an offering. We'll, 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 we'll sow into that. I want to sow into Will and Moosey personally. How many know when you're walking through a situation like this, there's a place where sometimes it can be a little challenging on the finances? right? Because you got deductibles and you got all that. Then there's all the hidden expenses. How many you know if you go to the dentist, you got to take a day off of work? You know what I mean? Well, how much does it cost me to go to the dentist? Well, the dentist charged me $150 and I had to take a day off of work. But the $150 is only part of it because you had to take a day off of work. You understand? So there's lost wages and all that kind of stuff. He's come off the road to be able to be with his wife. There's a whole bunch of things going on in the midst of all that. But I just thought I'd give you an opportunity. If he blesses your heart today and there's something that you'd want to do afterward, we're going to put some baskets out by the door. You can drop in a check, make your checks out to Will Hart Ministries, right? Or Hart Ministries. Heart Ministries, H-A-R-T, okay, Heart Ministries. You can do that. You can make a check. Um, you, can, you can even take the, you know, the little thing on the side of your bulletin. If you want to take that and fill that out, you can do that. And then we'll write a personal check to them as well. We can do that. You understand what I'm saying? So we can do all that, or you can just hand them, uh, you know, a couple couple thousand dollar bills would be fine, okay? <laughs> okay. But, but in the midst of all that, I just want to bless them. I want to sow into them. How many of you want to do that? I think that's a, it's a, when you know there's good soil, it's a great place to plant seeds. So I'd encourage you to do that, man. I think it's just a good idea. So I'll encourage you in that place. And, and, and I won't say anything more about that. It's just a, between you and God now. But I do believe in this man. I believe in his ministry. I believe in what God's used him for. I believe in what God's doing in his life. I'm excited about that. It's a good hour for the body of Christ. And I'm glad that God is raising up people like Will. I think of the, the trails he's pioneering, and, and, and he's blessed our heart. He's been with us in a couple of the Thrive meetings. As a matter of fact, uh, Ryan would be here today. He's actually preaching in another church. Pastor Dave's not here. He's out at the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Either they got the car out there, and there's a bunch of stuff from today's Make-A-Wish. If you get out and, and you get stuck in a convoy, it's Dave's fault. No, it's not. So, <laughs> but, but, but there's all kind of good things that are going on today. Uh, but, man, I'm excited for what this man has to bring to the house. He has touched the nations. He has blessed people. He, he was in, how long did you live in Mozambique? About three years? I thought it was about three years. Lived in Mozambique with Rowan and Heidi Baker. You might have heard of them. They pastor a little group over there. Uh, <laughs> okay. And uh, just people that are changing the world. He's now a, a son at Randy Clark's ministry. And Randy's, Randy's uh, I think he's pioneered a small work in Brazil. Uh, they gave him the keys to the country. I guess that's a pretty good day. <laughs> but, uh, but amazing things there. And God's blessed and used that. And, and, and I just thank the Lord for what Will has brought to the body of Christ. And today he's with us here at Harvest. Would you make him welcome in the house? Will Hart, come on. Awesome. Oh, definitely. He knows how to make me feel awkward. I'm Pastor Don. Love him. We love, we love being here. Love you guys. Um, it's a, it's a pleasure, a great joy to be here. Um, hi. Uh, wow. It's, I hate finance. I hate talking about it, so I'm not going to. So thank you, Don, uh, for talking about it. Um, we, I, I, it doesn't make sense. I, I don't hate finance. I love it. It's a tool. I love, I love raising finance for other people myself, so I, I humbly uh, am grateful at that. It's huge. Uh, uh, Don and, and, Pastor Don and Lori, I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I just, I love you, so I, 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 I don't think of you as pastor. Uh, I just think of you as a friend. I met, I met them 
uh, years ago via Josh Awalaba. And uh, I love the fact that he was my first introduction to your family. I'm not, I'm not joking. I, and I've told you this multiple times. Uh, Josh is one of the most generous people I've met. Um, and we shared an office together, uh, Josh Walba and I, at Global. And uh, I, I just love his humor. I track well with it. I love his heart. I think he's just one of the most giving guys ever. And, and uh, we just love it. We love the house. So I actually, we met first time uh, at lunch. You took us out, I think it was the pepper mill. I always remember food. I don't know why, but I always remember, I think he took us out to lunch at the Pepper Mill, and, and, and the thing that impressed me the most was uh, Pastor Don was just, he, he didn't even know me, he'd heard about, heard about me, because um, I'm kind of a big deal, <laughs> totally joking, everybody simmer down, uh, <laughs> we, we were talking, and and uh, he was just asking me about my family more than anything else. He just, he was just, he just was wondering how my family was doing and how we were doing spiritually, you know, what church we were going to, and making sure that we were getting everything we needed spiritually. And I'll never forget that. I remember it. He was, it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. And uh, since then, um, our our relationship has bloomed, and and I love coming here. Uh, I've, I don't know how many times I've been here. It's probably this is probably my fourth or fifth or sixth you know, over the years doing different things, uh, whether it's the Thrive Conference, which I really, really, really love, or I think, I think I've spoken here on a Sunday as well. I, I don't remember. It's hard to keep track. Um, if I repeat myself, I apologize if you guys have heard maybe some of my messages before. Um, actually, I don't. They're really good, so you need a double dose. Uh, if I repeat anything, um, that's just the Lord telling you that you need more of me in your life. <laughs> and, uh, and, yeah, all that earthy, cun- crunchy, lovey, dovey stuff. Love you guys. Thank you for having me here. Um, I told them in the first service, uh, you, I'm going to try not to repeat myself this service. Um, as, as I was sitting down there, I felt like the Lord wanted me to share a couple different things. So please forgive me if I, if I kind of uh, fumble my way through a little bit of this message because I wasn't prepared, but it's okay. Um, but I, I had my first encounter with Lori uh, in Mozambique, real encounter. I mean, we met before, but uh, Pastor Lori, I'm sorry. Uh, please forgive me. I'm so rude. Uh, but we, uh, we hung out in Mozambique, and I really fell in love with her uh, and just her heart. And what, what always impressed me is she, uh, even though you could tell that, that, that Mozambique was hard, she never, she never backed up. She never, she never complained once. And, uh, and, and that was one of the toughest trips we've had. It, it will go down the rec- record books as the worst experience on the way home. And if you want to hear about that, you can listen to the first, uh, the first uh, services message. But, uh, um, and you're just such, such a powerful woman. And I love, I love listening to you. I love watching you. I love how you guys flow together. You model something for me and my wife that we don't have, that I would love to have. And, uh, and it's not that we can't have it. But yeah, I just love watching you guys in ministry. So thank you for modeling that. Thank you for, for having a really funny son. And it's given me just a ton of joy. And thank you for letting me come here and share. I, I really, I really, really, really appreciate it. And I don't take it lightly. We, we love you guys. We love what God's doing here in this church. And uh, you know, I've had so many amazing encounters. As I was driving down here, I was, I was kind of remembering some of the times that I visited different churches in the area. And how much of a blessing it is to have so many wells of revival, you know, in like a 50 square mile radius of this place. There's, God is doing so much. I, I remember when I got first touched by the Holy Spirit, my mom would make us drive like two hours to a meeting. I would drive, it was, it was no joke to drive out of state easily four hours to get to a meeting where somebody hopefully would move in something similar to the anointing. You know, and we would go, and even if it wasn't anointed, you'd just make a, you'd, you'd, just, you'd just have a good time anyway, you know, and uh, it, was, it was awesome. And what a blessing it is to have houses like this. And, and not just houses, but to see the fruit that's coming out of these houses is just, it's just massive. I, I think that we're, I think that you guys are moving into a new season. Um, and I, I feel like prophets say that a lot. And so I'm not a prophet, uh, but I do like to prophesy. Uh, I think it's easy to say new seasons, new times, all that good stuff. But I, I, I say that, I say that, um, um, 
Not lightly. I really believe that what God is going to do in this next time is just expand, 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 expand. And uh, I said it during the, f- the first service, and I'll say it again. I, I really feel like uh, it's planting time uh, in this house. And, and, and I believe that God is going to multiply uh, what he's doing here in other places. And so, uh, yeah, I really feel that. I really feel like God's about to multiply this house in ways that you haven't expected. I saw a real um, connection taking place internationally. And I feel, like, I feel like your hearts have been knitted with churches internationally, but it hasn't, like, like it almost hasn't developed the way that you've wanted it to do. But God, God's about to plant internationally, and I feel like it's even going to come from this house. I feel like there's church plants from this house. Uh, I know there's a lot of time where we grab a hold of other people's vision, other people's movement, but I feel like there's such a raw movement taking place that, that, that you guys are going to bring this and plan it in other places, other houses. Uh, and it's not, it's not in, in Asia. It's not in Asia. Uh, and I don't know if you guys have been thinking about that, but I feel like it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely Latino-centered. Uh, so, yeah, I love the Latinos. I'm married to one. She's amazing. Uh, she's a Latina, not a Latino. There's a big difference, okay? <laughs> There's a big, big, big difference. But uh, I love my Latina. Um, she's, she's absolutely stunning. She's just this, this gorgeous little thing I met on the missions field. So, uh, guys, if you're single, get, go on the missions field, you know. <laughs> just get on the field. I met my wife. I walked in to a church. Uh, I was listening to the news because I get to get up in the morning and send my kids to school and not travel, which is great uh, in this time and in this season. So I get up in the morning and I, I, I usually uh, watch the news. I, I watch cartoons with my little guy. Usually I'm up at six with him watching cartoons. And then uh, I cook, the brec- cook breakfast for my kiddos, get them, my two older ones, get them out on the school bus. And then I, I uh, drink my coffee and watch the news. And I don't know, there was, they had something about love at first sight. And how many of you guys experience love at first sight? With, with, with whoever you're married with. Wow, that's very small. <laughs> you're like, nope, not me. <laughs> I got forced into this thing. Uh, but uh, wow, there's, a, there's, a, there's not a lot of love in this place, at least at first sight. Hold on, how many of you have ever experienced love at first sight? Raise your hand. Okay, a little bit more. Some of you guys are liars. Uh, it's because you're... <laughs> What an awful question to ask at church with your spouse sitting next to you. You're like, definitely not. I don't know how I got involved in this situation. I don't want to say I experienced love at first sight, but I experienced like va-va-voom at first sight. And when I saw my wife, she was sitting in the back of the church, and, and, uh, and I walked in. It was a little missionary in Paraguay. I was probably 17, 18 years old, probably just turned 18 and uh, she was sitting in the back, and I walked, and she was sitting next to a guy in the back of this church, and, and I, I, I remember, like, looking at her, and just being like, wow, you know, stunning, and then I saw this guy that was sitting next to her, and they were sharing this drink, they have this drink called Terere or Mate in, in Paraguay, and so they, you, it's just like a social thing, um, and so they were sharing this drink, and I was like, that guy's a punk, you know, because he was sharing a drink with, with, uh, with my wife. And, uh, and uh, come to find out it was her cousin. But uh, anyway, so I met her, and we've been, we've been married now for 15, 15? No, gosh, 11 years. Time flies when you're having fun. And, uh, and she's great. So December, we, we found out. For those of you, probably most of you know, but I'll just give you guys a quick update. December, we found out she had uh, stage 4 Hodgkin's lymphoma. And, uh, and so, yeah, I loved, I, I can't believe I said that. It sounds really good. My head was spinning, but literally our faith hasn't, hasn't been shaken at all. It's, it's kind of weird because I'm really, you hear a lot of teachers out there and you listen to some teachers and you love what they teach, but you can apply that to other teachers. And, and I'm not where a lot of other teachers are. I'm pretty much a normal guy. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not like a superhero. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not what most people probably think I am. Uh, I'm, I'm really normal. 
I like doing absolutely normal things. And <laughs> it's funny because when, 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 when something like that hits your family as a minister, um, you, you actually go, wow, I have, do I believe what I've been preaching all these years? And, which I do. No, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't preach it unless I believed it. And nine times out of ten, I've had to have walked it out, at least in my own life personally, for a little while before I preach it. Um, but it's funny, like, my head's spinning um, when something like that hits. But, but actually, my faith, my faith hasn't moved at all. I feel weird because, I, like, very rarely do I even think about cancer. I mean, we have to because we're making decisions about it, but like, it doesn't even, it, it, I, can, I can stand here in front of all of you today and say, it, it, actually, it actually hasn't phased us at all except for the inconvenience of the stupid thing. Um, just the timing, but, but, but in the middle of this, in the middle of this whole thing of watching, watching something in, in my household that doesn't belong there, doesn't have a right to be there, all the reason why Christians might say it should or could be there, it's all stupid. It's just all, it's all people trying to justify what's in front of them. We, we've, just, we've just had the most amazing time. In the middle of this chaos... This could, offend, this could offend people. So catch my heart. Don't necessarily just get me on a technicality. In the middle of this horrible time, we have had the most amazing time. So scripturally, God can take anything and use it for good, but I, I, I love the fact that I get to be off the road. I didn't early on. It was, it was hard. It was hard to get me to stop and slow down. I, I move fast. I know, you're like, you don't look like it. I understand. It's, it's weird. It's like one of those biblical paradox things. It, uh, when you go up to heaven, we'll, we'll talk to him. I love going fast, and, but I love being off the road. And I love, I, we can honestly say we've taken this time, and what the enemy has caused for good, he's just, mis- or for, for, for bad, he's miserably failed at. And every single ounce of this has turned to good. Um, I could tell you the testimonies. I'm sure everybody, it's funny, Christians want to hear testimonies like, hey, this person, the nurse got saved, and all, and all that stuff happens, but I'm not even focusing on that because uh, we allow ourselves to justify things when we hear testimonies like that. At the core, just waking up with my kids every morning and, uh, and being there is just huge. So I, I, I love this time. I hate this time but I absolutely love this time with my family. And, uh, and it's weird. It's weird to live in that. It's weird to have a head that spins, but a heart that's absolutely still. And it's hard to even convey that t- sometimes. That's why, that's why even lately I've, I've stopped posting stuff on my Facebook just because, not, I haven't stopped entirely, but any time I put out something, somebody gets the wrong idea. More people get easily offended about healing, I've noticed now, than almost anything else. You almost, you can attack anybody's theology, almost any way that you come at it. But here, here's, here's the thing. For us, uh, this, this, this time, I wouldn't trade this time with my family for anything in the world. And so, so I had one thing happen. I said, the Lord, I knew that when this came up, it was an option to do it well. And, and I really felt like the Lord said, how you handle this is going gonna, is gonna to really dictate whether you keep going on in ministry or not. And of course, my whole life's ministry, but... But I felt, I, this fear of the Lord came over me where I said, I, I've screwed up a lot of stuff in my life. I'll continue to screw up a lot of ways. Uh, but I'm not. I'm going to do everything in my power to, get this, to hit this ball out of the park. And so uh, it's been great. I, I, it might not sound spiritual, but I just love cooking for my kids. and uh, All the spiritual stuff is happening still. The Lord's still talking to me, but, but uh, I, I love the conversations. I love battling this thing with my children and, and walking them through the process of this. I, I'm mumbling, and I got a word. Uh, so, but thank you for your prayers. My wife is doing amazing. Um, um, her, we got a word. We got a word. We got, we got a lot of words when, when everything happened, but I listened to two of them because I trusted the people that they came from. Um, David Wagner was, was one of them. I don't know if you've had him here yet, but you will. Um, David, really? 
Are you serious? Awesome. He, out of this world. Uh, but David Wagner was, gave us probably the, the coolest word out there, and he waited on it for about three days. David Wagner and Larry Randolph gave us probably the best two words. And David Wagner said she, she will not lose all of her hair. And, uh, and she hasn't. It's like the craziest thing. The doctors can't figure it out. She's lost a major chunk of it, but I kind of like her in short hair. Don't tell her. It's less hair in my mouth uh, every morning. I just wake up, and so she's, she's just this stunning girl. And uh, we, we've had the best time trying on wigs. I tried on wigs with her. Anyway, anyway, so we're doing good. We're doing really good. She's doing well. Please do not stop praying for us, um, but thank you. Okay, help me, Jesus. I don't know if that made sense. Can I give something? I found these in my car, and I wanted to give them away. Can I give you guys something? Yeah? Somebody's birthday today? Today. Okay, is there somebody, somebody birthday on the 22nd of this month? Yeah? Come here, sweetie. I wrote something in here for you. Okay. Come here. Yeah, I know. Listen, I, I knew that it was a birthday. I thought it would be, because the Lord told me the 22nd, so I was having a hard time understanding whether it was here, but Lord, let me put something in here for you. So bless you, sweetie. Okay? You're welcome. He, lo- he loves you massive. Okay? Bless you. Um, so these are books on words of knowledge. Words of knowledge, um, these are, this changed my life, and it's going to change some of you guys. So if there's anybody here uh, from um, Messiah, is there anybody here from Messiah College? No? Is there anybody here that knows Messiah College? No, I'm just kidding. It's everybody. Uh, so, here, so is there anybody here that wants one of these? these are, this is just, we'll train you, equip, equip you for the, for the working of the gospel. That wasn't supposed to go to you, but I, my parents were artists, so, oh, there you go, buddy. That's for you. You, you get whatever you want. My parents were artists, so I never learned how to throw anything correctly. Um, but in the back, no? You guys just want to simmer down? Come, somebody from the back. Come on up, yeah? Wow. There you go. That's for you. And you can have one. You, you ask and you shall receive. Okay. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for what you're going to do today. Lord, I have uh, oh, very little time. Okay. Help me, Jesus. Lord, bless them, bless us. Come, Holy Spirit, do things that you do. We love you. Trust me, Lord. Don't take your Holy Spirit away from me because it's all I have. In Jesus' name, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Give me the words to say uh, that, that, that convey the message that's on your heart this morning, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Come, in Jesus' mighty, 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 mighty name, amen. Don, Pastor Don said something to me as we came in here. Uh, 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 my friend, uh, uh, Dan Moeller, Pastor Dan Moeller was here, and uh, he said something super funny. He said, he said uh, hey, Dan Moeller's here. It's rare. And I was like, well, I saw him. And uh, he goes, you uh, make sure you're on today, you know? <laughs> and, he, and he's totally joking, but, but I thought it was so funny because... Because I was thinking the same thing, you know. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh, no. I better, you know, because uh, he's, he's actually probably the only minister I listen to. Uh, he is. He's really the only minister I actually will put on and listen to and get encouraged by. Um, I mean, I've heard, I, I listen to Randy. I've listened to Bill a million times. But whenever, whenever I have that kind of moment in my car alone and I, and I want to be encouraged, I, I always pop Dan on. So it was awesome to hear him. But it, he, he brought... When he said that, he brought up a memory the first time I ever preached in front of Heidi Baker. I, want to, I just wanted to share you a, story, a story with you and then get into the word a little bit, and we'll, and we'll see what God wants to do. Um, I, was, uh, I was 22 uh, when Randy, uh, no, I'm sorry, I was 19 when Randy Clark first, first approached me, and uh, I just moved back from Paraguay. I moved to Paraguay when I was 17. Uh, I was there about a year, year and a half maybe two years before I came back. So I just moved back from Paraguay. I was traveling with a minister named Bob Bradbury. Uh, most of you will never know his name. He was the minister who I, I got saved at his meeting uh, in Hamilton, Massachusetts when I was 17 years old. And I was traveling around Paraguay with him, and uh, God was doing all these amazing things. And, but at the time, the Lord said, uh, move back to America. So I did. I moved back. I moved back in with my parents. I started delivering pizzas because there was nothing else to do. Uh, I'm from Gloucester, Massachusetts, small town north of Boston. It's actually a little island, so perfect storm. Uh, Gorton's fish sticks. Uh, come on, you're welcome. Uh, 
Uh, Wicked Tuna, if you ever watch that show. It's a real fish. None of that bass and stuff you guys catch in your money waters out here. Uh, <laughs> our fish, you can just cut them open and eat them right off a boat. It just, never mind. Okay. Uh, so, so I moved back home. And, and this word that God given me about, I'm going to take you to nations. I'm going to take you around the world. I have all these big plans for you. I'm going to prosper you. I'm going to, uh, you're going to speak in the nations. You know, like, you know those prophetic words where you just add the word nations on the end of it and it just, it gets bigger. Are you guys a lot, uh, please don't let first service outdo you. Please. It's just, that's sacrilege. You, you know when somebody prophesies and they throw in the end to the nations? I got that word a lot. And, uh, and so, so I find myself back at home in, with my mom and dad. I'd seen the deaf hear, the lame walk, the blind see. I had seen people come out of comas, ministered all over the nation of Paraguay, uh, in and out of the, the White House in Paraguay, uh, ministering private gatherings with the president's wife, all the dignitaries. Uh, just, and now I'm sitting in my Saturn two-door fluorescent blue lights in the back. It was a phase. Let's not talk about it. And, uh, and I'm delivering pizzas around, around my town. The whole time questioning God, wh- where are you? What about that word you gave me? What about, what about the nations? What about the gospel? What about here I am, your servant's ready, I'm listening, and, and now my car smells like pizza. You know, like I'm literally destroying the only possession I have in this earth. I didn't have anything. All I had was that car. That's all I had, and I was destroying it, driving around these, this island for hours on night, you know, just, just with people just being rude to me and didn't, you know, not tipping and just all this thing. And, and uh, I, I got to a place in my life, it was about eight months into it, nine months into this thing, that I started that, that, that motor that was keeping me going, the, the, the oil seemed to go dry. I, I let the oil go dry. There's many verses in the scripture that talk about Fanning into flame the gifts of God that are within you. That, you know, there's even, I think it's in Timothy, do, you know, do not put out the Holy Spirit. Do not quench the, the fire of the Holy Spirit. Let me, let me just read it so you guys don't think I'm totally sacrilegious. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gifts of God that are within you. Came to the laying out of my hands, for God didn't give you a spirit of power, but of, a spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. That's, that's uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5. You know, the, the fire, this Holy Spirit's fire was going out of me. And so I, I came to this place, I came to this, this time where, where uh, uh, there weren't any churches, there wasn't any revival meetings. All I had was the oil from eight months prior running around Paraguay. Uh, um, there was no favor on my life in the natural. Everything was going bad. I was just, I was struggling just to, just to get deliveries and and uh, the church that I was attending split. You know, there was just all this crazy stuff going on. So I came to this place where I said, God, uh, I know you. You know me. I, I, you don't seem to be close to me right now. Uh, so I'm upset at you. Um, and, but I need to do something other than this. And that's when Lance Walno calls me. Wow, right? No, no, he called me to install bathroom fixtures for him. <laughs> I, I don't talk about this a lot, but Lance wasn't the handiest man in the world. Still isn't. It's amazing. But he, he, I don't remember how it happened. Bob knew Lance. Lance, you know, Bob was talking to Lance. He said, I need bathroom fixtures. You know, Bob goes, I know a kid, you know. And uh, next thing I know, I'm in Lance Walno's house, drilling holes into his drywall, you know, <laughs> at, at, at 19 years old, going, what the heck, God, you know, thank you for this opportunity, but this isn't what I wanted. You know, I, I <laughs> for those of you who don't know who Lance Walno is, he's a, he's a pretty well-known minister. Amazing man. Um, and, then, and, then, and then Lance said, oh, you know what? I need somebody to duplicate my tapes for me. I said, oh, I, I know exactly how to do that. Never even looked at a tape duplicator my entire life. <laughs> so I weaseled my way in for tape duplication. Suddenly that whole like name it and claim it by faith and it shall happen thing, that didn't work. Like I, I messed up half of his teaching series. I took math. <laughs> Ooh, 
it was awesome. You know, like, like <laughs> I, 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 I pushed buttons that I didn't know. I ended up getting a paycheck from him, but it was like the last one ever. It was like one weekend at Lance's house, and then it was over. So, so I had this like morsel in front of me, like, oh, God, you're giving me favor with leaders, and then, you know, back to pizzas. So I'm delivering pizzas, and it goes on a little bit longer. Finally, I go, God, I get to that moment, that time in my life where I'm like, this is it, God. I have to do something. You better move me, or I'm going to move you. And if you're not going to move me, then I'm going to tell you I'm going to move you. And when you move me, if I feel like it, I might go there, because that's where I feel, and that's my attitude right now. And blah, blah, blah. I need to get out of Gloucester. Anybody ever feel like they need to get out of Dodge? (laughs) Are you guys okay? i I got to share this with you. So, so I call, I hear about the move of God at Bethel, right? I've been previ, I, I, I was at Bill Johnson's first conference he ever did with Randy. It was 1999 in Worcester, outside of Worcester, Massachusetts. Um, Bill Johnson, Randy Clark, Randy introduces Bill as his friend. Uh, they had done conferences together at each other's churches, but it was the first conference outside of either of their churches And Randy introduces Bill. This is Bill Johnson. He's my friend. You do not know him, but you will know him, and his anointing will eclipse mine. That's how Randy introduced Bill in 99. I meet meet Bill up at Life Center, somehow in the middle of this whole thing. I, I got invited out there to be with Bob. I don't really know how it happened, but I ended up at Life Center, Bill Johnson, Charles Stock, right when he bought Life Center. I end up there at that meeting. I'm there for like three hours. We drove all the way out. I'm there for three hours. We drive all the way home that night. I meet Bill. It plants this seed inside me. I got to go to school. I got to get out of Dodge. I go, I don't care whether you're even in this God. I'm moving. I call up Bethel. I call Bethel. Guess who answers the phone? Chris Vallotton. <laughs> this is back when Chris Vallotton would answer the phone. The school was, had maybe 20 students at the time. Bethel was not... Bethel, you know, it was just a church. And Chris Valentin takes my, takes my application for the school over the phone, and I start packing up my Saturn. I'm getting ready to move out to, to Bethel, about seven days away from moving out. Finished everything, told everybody I'm, I'm leaving, and that's when the phone call comes in from Randy. That's when the phone call comes. And he says, I've heard about what God's doing in your life. I want you to come and travel with me which in turn has opened up a myriad of doors that that one leads to another. Why am I telling you this? I'm waiting actually to find out from the Lord why I just said all that. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Fan into flame the gifts of God that are within you that came through the laying on of my hands. For God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. A lot of people don't like the sound mind thing. But the sound mind keeps you going after courage, power, and love, whether you feel it or not. I believe that there's many people in here that have been given a word from the Lord for their season over their life, and you guys kind of feel like you're delivering pizzas. Many of you feel like you're spinning your wheels, driving around your town, driving around your island. For me, it was an actual island. I could go around in about two hours. And it's like you pray, and you, you end up at, at that, that promised land. You end up at that thing, that moment in time where you feel like the Lord's saying, oh, this is what I'm calling you to do. For me, that was Lance. It was, it was amazing uh, that Lance Wallen would call me in. And, and it was my end. It was that breakthrough moment. But, but it wasn't. It wasn't the breakthrough moment that God had for me. And then, and then when I met with Bill, it, that wasn't the breakthrough moment either, either. It didn't come at the conference. It came after all that. I don't know why God does that. It's so upsetting. I don't know why God puts you in positions and then pulls back and then puts you in another position and then pulls back and then dangles something from time to time and then pulls back. And then the only thing I can chalk it up to is preparation, looking at your heart. I think that's what a lot of us would do. I don't know. I've I've come to a place in my life where I stop diagnosing it and I just accept it. I, you have to trust. There comes in a place with your prophetic words where you have to stop diagnosing and just trust. Jesus wants 
to know what's in your heart. And he will position you to see how much you're willing to fight, to see how much you're willing to run, to see how far you're willing to go with him. He, he, he does this. He's done it all throughout Scripture. He's done it all throughout history. Um, there's a myriad of different Scriptures I can give you. Some of my favorites are Peter walking on water. He, he sends them out to go ahead of him, prepare a way, but Jesus wasn't in the boat. He puts 12 of his best men in a boat, says, go, prepare a way for me to come. And then he sends them off. And you have 12 of the best people on the planet, the best Christians on the planet, high-fiving each other as they go across the lake. But Jesus wasn't with them. He comes to them in the middle of the night, third watch. He comes to them when the winds are contrary, the waves are contrary. Right? Are you guys alive? Do I need to, like, pass out more books? (laughs) Just maybe? The winds are contrary. That's when Jesus reveals himself to them, in the middle of the storm in the middle of the calling. See, they were so fixated on the call that they missed it when Jesus came in the middle. They were so fixated on the call and they were so worried about the storm and maybe as Christians coming under attack that you see the response of their hearts when Jesus comes in a way that they don't like and don't approve of. And they scream at Jesus, ah, a ghost. It's a ghost, and they call Jesus the enemy. Why am I saying this? I I believe there's many of you in here that have a word. You've been given a word. I I don't believe there's anyone in this room that actually hasn't been given a word from God for the season that you're in, for the calling of God that's on your life. But very rarely do, do, do I see people in the middle of ministry, in the middle of going and giving themselves, that actually see the fruition of what they know to be true coming to pass with the word. There's a lot of people naming it and claiming it, quoting it, going after it, but, 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 but totally feel unsatisfied with whether they're hitting that thing or not. I, I wanna put it out there. I wanna throw this thing out to you that, that, that maybe, just maybe God has commissioned you, but we might have missed it in the middle because we didn't like the form that he came in. Or, 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 or we so desired it that, that, that we made it happen, or, 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 or we thought that that moment, that first time that the door swung open was the, was the full answer, but it was just drilling holes in Lance Walno's bathroom. God, God, Jesus, he, he will come to you in ways that you don't like to see what's in your heart. How do you know what you're carrying? You know what you're carrying when your heart gets challenged. You know what you're carrying when impossibility stands in front of you and you tell it to bow in the name of Jesus and either it bows or it doesn't. You actually get to see what you're carrying in those times. And Jesus will put you in a place where you get to see what you're carrying. The disciples saw it. You you saw what came out of the disciples when Jesus came in a way he didn't like. You saw, ah, ghost! They basically go like this, Satan, ah! As 12 of the best people scream. It was only after that that Peter said, Jesus, if it's you, right? Great statement of faith, right, Peter? Right, like like claiming it, you know, going out, if it's you, you bid me to come. Like, what is that? That doesn't look like any sort of faith model we've been modeled ever. If it's you, you bid me to come, Jesus, maybe. (laughs) And here's the response of the Savior. Come. No direction. No, your feet are going to get floaty, Peter. Your your hips are going to, you know, that meat you've been packing on is going to keep you up, you know? (laughs) You know? Peter, two mighty porpoises will rise up from the, from the depths and you will glide on their backs to victory. <laughs> Do you know in the, in the telling of the story, they actually don't go into how the miracle manifested. Why? It's not important. See, as, as, as Christians, as believers, especially as charismatics, can I go there? We want how that miracle happens. We want who, what, when, where, why, and how. But Jesus isn't about that. He, he, he's about process with you. He's about, he's about putting you in a boat and, and like, like bumblebees and shaking it up a little bit. He, he's about putting you in a boat with your believers who say one thing, 
to each other, who, who, who gather around and believe one thing and say it with their mouths, but he really wants to see what's inside of you. What are you carrying? And you see that when he comes in ways that we don't like. Who knew Jesus the best? Those 12 men. <laughs> who rejected him the most? <laughs> that time? Those 12 men. Ah, it's a ghost. And then you really see Peter, if it's you. Here's the most beautiful thing. Are you ready? He doesn't mind that. He, he doesn't mind that at all. Jesus doesn't mind the fact that you don't get it. He doesn't mind it. Why? Because he always looks at the heart. He always looks at the heart. And he knows your heart, even if you miss it in the middle of it. He knows your heart. Even if fear comes out of you in the moment, he knows your heart. Even if you respond in a way that won't make you proud on a Sunday morning, he knows your heart. He knows your heart. And, and he'll take it. See, he goes, come. Come. Peter goes, giddy up, let's do this. That's at least what I envision it. Right? He swings his legs over and he stands. And he does something that's never been done in human history. It's never been done. Actually, there was that once in the Old Testament. But let's not talk about that. New Testament, never been done. I'm trying to think. I just did an Old Testament review real quick in my head. New Testament, never been done. Never been done. And he walks out there. Everybody preaches this. Oh, Peter sank. Right? Every time I hear it preached on the radio, listen to WJTL in the morning, oh, don't be like Peter. Peter. Right? <laughs> Peter took his eyes off Jesus. Oh, no, don't do that. Don't do that. I don't know why I'm doing a horrible southern accent. Please forgive me. I'm sure I'm offending somebody here. If not here, then online. Please forgive me, online people. Oh, brother. <laughs> it's the water. It's just the water. Don't be like Peter. Don't be like Peter who takes his eyes off the prize. Jesus doesn't want you to do that. The reality is Jesus uses normal people. He uses people that don't have their act together. He uses people that sit in pews on Sunday morning. He uses people that in the middle of the greatest miracle literally take their eyes off Jesus. He uses people that are chosen, set apart for such a time as this and a purpose, commissioned to go and do the things of the Lord. And when the Lord comes, even in their moments of great, great, great triumph, even in the middle of great triumph, even in the middle of great miracles, takes their eyes off Jesus. Where was Peter going? Jesus. Where did Peter end up? And he got his hips wet. That's the best thing. That's the best thing about all of this is, is he doesn't throw us to the side. He says, that's a heart of somebody that I can use. That's the heart of somebody that I can shape and I'm going to take him. Who stood up on the day of Pentecost? You were saying that this morning. Who stood up on the day of Pentecost? One man, Peter. Why? It is not a coincidence that Peter was the only one that stood up. And brought the fruition of the word. See... God is putting you in situations. God has the suddenlies. He is a God of the suddenlies. He is a God that comes in and moment. Suddenly there came a sound of a mighty rushing wind. And suddenly there stood Jesus walking on the waves. He is a God of the suddenlies. And we need to learn to prepare ourselves for the unpreparable. Well, that doesn't make sense. I know, but I'm saying it anyway. We, we, we have to at least position our hearts to go, Lord, I have been crying out. God, I have been asking you to use me. God, I've been crying out for revival. And literally put yourself in a place that at any time, in any place, Lord, however you want to come, even if I don't like it, even if it doesn't make sense, even if the finance isn't there, Lord, if it slightly re resembles you, I will not surround myself with Christians that all believe the same thing. I will go after you. 
See, Peter, he modeled ignoring the rest of his believers. Not in rebellion. Not in rebellion at all. David modeled this. We all say, God, make me like David. David was psycho. Don't sit there and be like, oh, David, the little harp player, you know, nursing lambs in the field, you know, just playing harps and and loving on little lambs. You know, no, no, he was bipolar. Read the Psalms. (laughs) Read, read the Psalms. Don't look at me like I'm some sort of freak. Just read the word. Uh, I don't have a degree in it, but I can read it. (laughs) Up, down, in, out, left, right. Where are you? I love you. You know, you are close to me. Now you are far. Who, who, are you even real? You know, like, like, (laughs) like, like normal, normal life. (laughs) David stands in front of the king, right? First of all, I just love it. He goes, he looks at Goliath in the land, a representation of the enemy in the camp. And who's the ones that are trained? The army. There is no one better on this planet. There is no one more set apart on this planet to do the job of taking out an army than the army of the living God. Weapons, training, team building exercises, (laughs) you know, battles experience under their belt, and they see this thing standing in the land. I love the army of the living God. God is raising up an army, but so many people fall on that, and and they just kind of fall into rank. You know? And of course, they'll swing a sword. They'll shout a battle cry. They'll get on Facebook. (laughs) We're believing, brother. But when Goliath stands in their land, they kowtow in fear. See, Goliath was a barrier, but he was also the key to the promised land. (laughs) And it took the audacity, most people believe he's between the age of 14 and 16 years old, when he sunk a rock in between his eyes. Come on, I would not let Josh, my son, play with Goliath. Or David. (laughs) Or Goliath. (laughs) As he sinks a rock into his skull, dropping immediately. (laughs) We're all like, yay, that was a teenager that did that. We're like, Lord, I want to be like David and let me dance, God. No, he danced (laughs) naked. (laughs) Keep your clothes on. You know, do, 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 it's Sunday morning. I can't believe I'm doing this in front of the church, you know? <laughs> What's the suddenly? Jesus comes. What's the suddenly? David stands at the battlefield. There's times, there's times of great promise. There's times of great breakthrough. There's times that God wants to push you and elevate you and project you into your destiny. It, it, it's not the overall. I mean, yes, it's the overall, but it's at the same time, it's those moments that he goes, and suddenly. Amen. <laughs> and suddenly. I've had so many suddenlies over the years. I, I've had too many. It's hard to keep track. I love the suddenlies. When I go home at night, I don't remember the the best meetings. I remember the suddenlies. It's true. I I really, I remember those times when I didn't deserve it. And the Lord says, you're the donkey I'm going to ride into town on. (laughs) Don's never having me back. I feel it. So I'm just going to go with it for the rest of the 10 minutes I got. I'll never forget the first time. Right, right now, I, I have a million stories. I, I just want to share one with you real quick. 
maybe, maybe, maybe six stories real quick. <laughs> I, uh, I started, I started uh, punching manuals for Randy when I came on board. I, I did the math. I actually ended up paying Randy something like 50 cents an hour to work for him for the first year of internship. I paid him. It was awesome. You do it when you don't get any money. You do it when it hurts. You do it when you're sick. You do it when it doesn't make sense. So I would just serve. Everything that I've gotten, I've gotten from serving. I would serve Randy and I would go and I would run bookstore. I'll never forget all the times Randy would be ministering and he'd have the other interns. I'd be back at the book table haggling with people over prices of books. It was just awful. I'm going, I'm paying Randy to travel with him and run his bookstore. It doesn't make sense. I just served. It was about six, eight months after, into, after I was serving Global Awakening that uh, Josh, Randy's son, he was, um, he was working for Global Awakening at the time. He's my age, but he comes up to me and he says, hey, Will, come here. I got something to tell you. He takes me out to his car. He says, the other interns are, are, I don't want the other interns to hear this. I said, cool. He says, uh, we just had a leader drop out from Mozambique, and, and we want you to, uh, to go. We want you to go to Mozambique and lead the team. I said, what? Like, you got to understand, I'm nobody. And, uh, and I would be at home praying secretly, God, uh, just take me to Mozambique. Take me to Africa. All I want to do is run with Heidi. All I want to do is is see the gospel in Mozambique. The worst thing that Randy ever did was he brought us in five days before Voice of the Apostles. So I became an intern five days before Voice of the Apostles. Five days after I signed on with Randy, I, I saw Heidi Baker and had my first encounter with, with her and the Holy Spirit through her, and it wrecked me. I was just counting the days to leave Randy five days after I joined up with him to go and be with Iris. And, and, and Josh is saying, our, our team leader for, for Iris just pulled out. We need somebody. Randy talked about it. You're the only intern that can organize, it seems. You do really well at the bookstore. So, so we're going to let you lead the team. Next thing I know, I'm on a plane running a team for, for Randy Clark with a pastor named Tom Jones, who's a pastor out in, uh, in Florida. Now, out of Tom Jones's church, there's been a lot of stud- suddenly. Steve Swanson is a suddenly from Tom Jones's church. He was worship leader there. Mike and Dina Van Hull was a suddenly. I don't know if you know Mike and Dina from the from a movie. Do you guys know the mu- movie uh, Furious Love or uh, Holy Ghost? You guys might know that one, right? Father of Lights. I'm missing it out. Mike and Dina Van Hull, two of the two of the greatest saints I've ever encountered on the planet. Mike and Dina Van Hull. They came from a suddenly encounter at, 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 while Randy was speaking at Tom Jones's church. Tom Jones is the man that ended up marrying my wife and I. It's a long story, but I end up in Mozambique with Tom Jones. We get off the plane. We drive from Pemba down to the base where Heidi is. This is early. Heidi had just moved to Pemba. Didn't have a staff, barely had a base there. We, we were doing tents half the time, but we pull up to the base and we unload, and I am 21, 20 at the time, I blend in with the team. I I don't have a leader hat. Heidi never got a picture. We just land. Tom introduces himself to Heidi. I guess they knew each other. Says, hi, how are you? She lets go of Tom and walks directly at me. She goes, who are you? I said, my name's Will. She goes, you're going to speak at my pastor's pastor's conference. Yep, that's the Lord. He wants you to do that. I was 20 at the time. Probably the most nervous I've ever been in my entire life was sitting, was standing on the stage platform with Heidi Baker sitting, next, sitting on the floor in front staring at me. Rollin Baker sitting next to her. Sapraza sitting next to her, who's raised six from the dead. Tom Wecky, who's raised eight at this point in her life, raised eight babies from the dead, is sitting behind me. And the Lord gives me a word on authority to preach at this conference. I've never felt more humiliated or more like a fish out of water than that point. But it was the one thing that opened up the doors for me to serve the bakers. Right now, I'm currently serving on leadership of Iris Ministries. I'm on the board of Iris Ministries. I'm one of like three on the board of Iris Ministries. And we're watching God do a movement across the planet right now. 
of, of raising up missionaries and seeing a great move. Here, here's what I'm saying. God has suddenlies for you. He has moments in time that, that he wants to see the fruition of what he has told you come to pass. And, and a lot of times we can reject them because they don't fit our comfort zone. Here, I could have said, Randy, no, I'm not ready. I'm 21. I don't speak the language. Don't send me. Send Jamie. He's much better. You know, uh, you, we have these options. I could have told Heidi, no. I was so scared. I've never been more petrified in my entire life, ever. Like, it's scary having Dan sit there. I, I, I was never more scared in my entire life preaching. I preached for five minutes. I preached a two-hour message in five minutes in Mozambique, and then I stopped. I was physically trembling standing there in front of them, but fan into flame the gifts of God that are within you that came through the laying on of my hands, for God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. God wants to take those things that have been implanted in you, those words that have been given to you, and he wants to begin to fan them into flame. I really believe that this is a season over your life where, where the suddenlies of God are going to take place. I cannot pray the suddenlies to happen. I, I, I can't. I can't. I mean, we can try, but, but really, it, it, it is the grace of God and the sovereignty of God when those things happen. Here's what we can do. You have the ability to get with God and say, God, God, please don't let me be one that, that, that sees you on the waves and goes, that's the enemy because it's out of our comfort zone. God wants to take you out of your comfort zone. He wants to take you out of your comfort zone. It has to come out of your comfort zone. It has to stretch you. You get to see what you believe when you are stretched. God is looking to take you out of your comfort zone. But please, 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 don't be like the 12 or the 11 who get on the boat and high five each other because they're on the boat. Jesus commissions them to get on the boat, but that's not why he sent them. I believe there are many people in here that have been given a word from God, but the word from God wasn't about the word. It was to get you to a place where he could bring another word and bring another suddenly. Well, that doesn't make sense. I'm going to try to explain it the best I can. Jesus says to the 12, go ahead of me and prepare a place for me to come. But when he gets to the other side, it says in Matthew that, that when Jesus and Peter got back on the boat, the boat immediately reached the other side. He says, go ahead of me and prepare a place for me to come. But when they get there, Jesus is already with them. Would Jesus lie to them and say, go ahead of me? No, he wasn't lying to them. It was his heart to send them, but that's not why he sent them. He gave them a word to get them on the boat to go. But he was already there when they got to the other side. He, he sent them on the journey to see what was inside of them. What's inside of you? I believe that the Lord is hungry for that more than just another, oh yeah, I'll go anywhere, I'll do anything. No, he, he will take that word and put you in a place. And when he does, giddy up. He will take you at those words, those times when you run to the stage and go, Lord, here I am, take me. And then you get up and you go back to work and, and you go, God, what's going on? You know, and then Pastor Don gets up and goes, there's a missions trip going to Ecuador next week. And you go, man, I need my granola bars. I'm not going on that one. Don gets up the next Sunday and goes, man, God, God there's, a, there's a really attractive speaker we're taking up an offering for, for him and his family and his wife. <laughs> we'll just filter this one in there real quick. You know? And you go, oh, whoa, no, that's just my finance. That's, I was going to use that to refinish my deck this summer. <laughs> there are suddenlies. I don't want your deck money, just so you know. <laughs> Fix that thing. You don't want little kids falling through that. It's dangerous. Thus saith the Lord. Okay. <laughs> uh, there are moments in time. Grab a hold of them. Run at those things. Say, Jesus, this might not look like you. This might not come in a way that I like, but I'm running after you. And when you do, giddy up. God is going to take you on journeys that you've never been on before. God is going to take you on trips that you've never been on before. God has to stretch you. 
Paul says this over Timothy, a spiritual boy, fan and flame the gifts of God that are within you that came through laying on of my hands. For God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Fear will hold you back from this. Amen. Lack of power will hold you back from this. You gotta get anointed, guys. You gotta get the juice. You gotta. No longer can we just be talk. No longer can we just be words in which man's wisdom speaks. We have to carry this thing. These are the keys. I'm going to tell you. Paul says this to his boy. And you know that whole floor ceiling analogy? Are you guys, I feel like I'm losing you. Come back. Come, come, stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm going to fight for it. Stay with me. Power. We have to move in power. This is a ministry that understands the gifts. You understand the move in power. But make sure that you don't just tick it off and go, man, I'm a part of a church. I'm a part of a 12, getting on a boat to go and do the miracle signs and wonders. Make sure that you be the one, that the first one to say, I'm going to pray for the wheelchair. I'm going to pray for that person. Fight. When nobody else will stand up, make sure that you run at that thing. Love. Power. Love. Gosh, I wish that we didn't have to love as much as we do. It's hard. Tough. And a sound mind. I never understood the sound mind thing, especially being a charismatic. I didn't. I'd be like, fan into flame the gifts of God that really came to laying out of my hands. Yeah, lay, let's lay hands. Forgot to give you power. Love. Oh, that's a hard one. And a sound mind, you know. <laughs> the sound mind. A lot of people don't understand that. I believe the sound mind keeps you going after power, love, and courage, whether you feel it or not. It is the most important thing. Sound mind, faith, understanding truth. The Bible says truth will set you free. The sound mind keeps you going after truth, whether you feel it or not. So Paul says this to his boy, fan it into flame. The King James says this, stir up the gifts of God that are within you. So, so God, once again, puts it on you. Oh, don't put it on me, God. I want to just put it on you. Let your will be done. Whatever happens, all the time, here I am. He puts it back on us, says, fan it into flame. Do something with what you receive. Do something with what you receive. Do something. Well, I, I don't feel like I've received anything. I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask that the Holy Spirit will do it. Two more minutes, and then I'm done. Maybe seven, okay. <laughs> I'm going to end with this. My wife and I were going through a really hard time, okay? Um, we were going through a bad time. Um, we've had it on and off over the last few years. Uh, I'm, I'm amazed that I'm still married to her, not because of sin, just stupidity. It's amazing how, how, how my stupidity can hurt so many people. And I was just being stupid. We were both being stupid. I'll put some of it on her. It's 50-50. <laughs> it's amazing how we can, we can see miracles, signs, and wonders and forget the basics. Forgiveness, repentance. Just stick to the basics, guys. So we were having that time. It was, I'm just going to be really open. I feel like I can. So we were going through a time, and my wife was coming to me. She was going, God, God. Uh, she was praying this. She was praying against me. She's sneaky. She was going, God. Fix him, change him. I would wake up, she'd have her hand on me, and she'd go, shit about a Honda, but a bit of Kia. And I'd be like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm trying to cast demons out of you. I was like, no, they're familiar, you know? And so, so we would go back and forth, and, you know, <laughs> I'd feel burning. What's that? Ah, come back, I like you, you know? No. So she'd be trying to cast demons out of me, and, and we would go and visit people and get counsel and get wisdom and pray. And, and uh, so we're at this point, this is a real point. Please, three minutes. There's a real point in our life and in our marriage. And, 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 and it, you know, it was top, top three in, in the last 11 years. Top three. Y'all have had them. Don't look at me like you haven't had them. <laughs> so we're there, and, and, and my wife, she would come home and say legitimate, real, real mother things. Like, hey, your kids. Oh, hey. It's kind of creeped up on me there. It's like the Oscars, you're playing the music, and never mind, okay. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. So, so we're at that time in our life, and um, things aren't going well. I know I've said this, I'm just trying to find my place again. So things aren't going well, and she, she comes up to me, and she starts saying stuff like this, I'm a single mom, you know, which is, which is true. 
It really is true. As much as I would say, no, you're not, you know, God's with you, and this is the calling, I was leaving her. I was leaving her 200 days out of the year. More than that, 250 from time to time. I was, I was a father through Skype. I was a father through FaceTime. And even though I was doing the best, I was, I was going down my list, and I was checking off all the technicalities. You know, I'm doing this. When I'm home, I'm home. I turn my cell phone off, and I was checking off all my list, but I wasn't there. I was there, but I wasn't there. So we're going back and forth, and she, she gets to this point where she goes, I just don't know if it's worth it anymore. And she knew in her heart and in her mind that it was, but the emotion of her kids and, and, the, and the facing the reality of being home alone was, saying something, was telling her something different. But it was real. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that I was right and she was wrong. This is real. I, I was wrong and she was right. So I get an idea because I'm brilliant. I said, I'm going to give her testimonies. What she needs is some testimony. <laughs> Whoever said that, I'm in love with you. Yes. Oh, gee. I see you've been in the ministry for a little while. So, I mean, my heart's in the right place. I go, babe, it is worth it. Let me tell you all the ways it's worth it. So I'd bring her testimony. Salvation. She'd go, that's amazing. But your kids aren't saved. You know, they are, you know. (laughs) So I go, okay, healing. Well, that's okay, but your kids want their dad. It's real. So this goes on. And I just start telling, babe, but look at this, look at this, look at this. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So finally, uh, she comes up to me and she goes, I just need to get out of here. I need to do something with my life. I can't just be mom. I need to do something more. I met her on the field. We traveled around. It's in her blood just as much as it is in mine. But she's the one that stays at home. She goes, I need to get out of here. I need, to do, I need to do something. I need to fan into flame. She goes, my fire's going low. So I said, wherever you want to go, at any conference, you tell me, I'll send you out to Bethel. She goes, nope. I said, okay. She goes, well, I want to go to the Congo. Right? It's the most dangerous nation in the world. It's top three right now. When we first went, it was number one. I said, you want to go to the Congo? And I found myself saying yes, even though internally I was going no. Because I knew, I, I just knew I didn't want to miss the suddenlies. See, sometimes these things come up in front of you, and inside you're going, nope, 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 nope. But it's God. And see, so here's, here's wisdom. Wisdom, brother. Listen to wisdom, brother. Here's wisdom. Send your wife to the most dangerous nation in the world. So, so I put on my wisdom cap, and I go, okay, who are you going with? I'm thinking a football team, you know, the UFC fighter, Pacquiao. Oh, sad. Come on. And and she goes, I'm going with a girlfriend. I said, who? She goes, Cass. And I knew Cass years ago. I go, how old is she? She goes, 24, this little blonde-haired 24-year-old girl. I said, you're going to go into the most dangerous nation with a blonde-haired 24-year-old girl that I haven't seen in years. I don't even know anything about, really. I hear she's doing stuff, but she goes, yep. I said, okay, but inside I'm just going, "Mm mm-mm, I'm praying this thing down now in Jesus' name. (laughs) She goes, I don't have any money. I said, I'll pay for it. Inside I'm going, not a single dime of my finance, Jesus, (laughs) is going to this thing. So there's this battle. There's this battle of of wisdom, trying to be a good husband, trying to protect the one thing that God gave me, my wife, and and. And, and at the same time going, God, I trust you. And even if I don't like the package that it's coming in, I'm going to go. I give the money, tickets buy. I'm driving her to the airport praying, God, flat tire, do it now. You know, like <laughs> remove protection, whatever. I don't know, do something. I, 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 I pull $1,000 out of my pocket and I give it to her. I said, if you, if you need anything, Use this. This is your emergency money. Pay your way out. I said, I don't care if the rest of the team dies. You get out. You come home. (laughs) You think I'm joking. (laughs) You don't get it. I'm not joking at all. You're my wife. You come home. Husbands understand what I'm saying. See, I'm not scared to say it. Because when I don't say it, other people feel like they're inadequate. 
and they can't, I'm just a normal guy trying to make this thing happen. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I trust him. I said, do whatever it takes. I said, I don't care if it costs you $100 a phone call. Use this money to text me once in the morning and once at night. She goes, <laughs> about that. She goes, uh, I was going to, I was waiting to tell you this. I said, well, tell me what? She goes, I'm going into the red zone. I go, what? What about like a fuchsia zone or a, a, a pink hue zone? I said, the red zone doesn't sound good. She goes, I'm going into the red zone. It's the most dangerous part of the Congo right now. I said, I said, what does that have to do with you texting me? She goes, there's no cell phone service, no radio service, no nothing. I'm going to disappear for like seven days. I said, you're only gone like eight days. She's like, I know. So I'm dropping my wife off, sending her to the red zone. Our marriage isn't doing well. Legitimate, legitimate place that she could l lose her life. Legitimate. This isn't like a fear that I'm drumming up. You know, this isn't like, oh, they're going on the missions field. Maybe they won't come home. No, like this is actually could happen. And the whole time inside of me, I'm going, no. But the only thing that come out of me is, yes, you can train yourself. Fear is a choice. Fear is faith in Satan. You can train yourself. And I'm going, yes, Lord, I trust you. And at the core, I said, even if she dies doing the one thing that she loves, I'll be okay with that. I would rather her die on the missions field than in a minivan. Okay, I know that might be tough, but I told you I was going to be honest. I send her off. Our biggest issue was, God, is it worth it? Is ministry worth it? I send her off praying that God would answer her. She goes to the missions field. She goes in the Congo. She drives out into the red zone. And while she's there in the red zone, she gets introduced to this little girl from South Africa. Brown hair, about 30, 32 years old. They meet in the red zone. She goes, who are you? She says, my, my name's Moosey Hart. She goes, man, I once met a man named Will Hart. She goes, I did a conference. She goes, I went to a conference in South Africa years ago, about four or five years ago. My friend hauled me to it. I didn't want to go, but she hauled me, hauled me over to it. And, and while I was there, your husband shared pictures of what God did in Congo. On our, on our earlier trip that we did about six years prior, seven years prior. She goes, my heart got so struck, I, I, I ran forward in the line. And, and, and as everybody lined up in there, your husband went down praying. He said, before he even got to me, I went out in the spirit. And I got up knowing that my life was forever changed and that I had to give myself to the nation of Congo. She's been there for four, four and a half, five years, been through two wars, this girl is real deal giving her life away for the sake of the gospel. There is only one way that my wife would have received the answer to the question whether it's worth it or not. One way. And God knew the perfect way to let my wife know that it was worth it. Whether her having the question or not is absolutely irrelevant. Whether it was right for her to even ask that question is irrelevant. God don't even care because he loves. He loves where you're at. He'll meet you where you're at. He'll take those things, those issues. God, I don't know. And he'll answer them. But listen to me. How did it come? It came in the letting go. It came in the stepping out. It came not kowtowing in fear. Listen, God has these moments for you. I've gone way too long. Listen to me. You are totally free to go, but if you would like to give me just a few minutes, I want to pray and I want to ask the Holy Spirit to come. I believe the Holy Spirit is going to anoint many people in this place. I believe that there are suddenlies that are here this morning. I believe that God, like that girl in South Africa, has something for many of you in this place. I don't understand it. I don't know why he waits for church meetings to do suddenlies. I don't get it, but I know he does. Whether it's like Tom Jones, Steve Swanson, Mike and Dina Van Hull, this girl in South Africa, Brian, Brian, uh, Brian from Praise Chapel. God does things in meetings. And I would ask that you give him just five minutes of your life right now and put yourself on the altar 
and say, Holy Spirit, whatever you have for me, I want it. And let's believe right now that God is going to come and do amazing things in your life. I believe that many of those prophetic words are going to be answered. I don't believe that God holds them out and waves them in front of you like some annoying child. Is there anybody hungry in this place? John 7, 37 says this, all who are thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And as the scripture says, streams of living water will flow from within you. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Paul said it over Timothy, fan into flame the gifts of God that are within you that came through laying out of my hands. Here's what he said. He said, I put my hands on you. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I am the donkey he rides in on. But Paul says it. I put my hands on you. Do something with what you received. Paul says this over Timothy, I long to come to you, I long to come to you so that I might impart a spiritual gift that will strengthen you. Paul understood this, he says, I can't do this from afar, I can't pray for you like I pray for the churches, I need to come to you and impart a gift that will strengthen you. I believe that God is a God of impartation, I believe he wants to do something in this place right now. And whether it's in his hunger, whether it's in your hunger or his grace, he wants to do it. Either way, nobody in here is safe. If you are hungry, stand to your feet. If you need to go and get your kids, please go get your children. If you, if you need anything, if you only have a certain amount of time, just give him a few minutes of your life. The Lord gave me a word here. The Lord gave me a word this morning. Jehovah Jireh is, wit- is written one time in the Bible. Do you know that? That's right. Jehovah Jireh, the provider, is written one time in the Bible. And here's when it is revealed. Jehovah Jireh, the provider, is, is, is revealed. His, 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 this, this, this personality, this, this, this way that God moves is revealed as, as Abraham is holding a knife up over his son. And so many of you have been, have been receiving from Jehovah Jireh just, God, help me with a cell phone bill. But he, he, he says that he, he wants to prove himself in something more than just a cell phone bill. He wants to prove himself in more than just fixing a flat tire on the way to church. It's insanity to cry out for the book of Acts and live a different life than that. It really is. There is something, there is a raw violence of the kingdom and here's the core we can preach it we can put it in u.s standards we can put it in american terms and local church terms but i cannot get away from give yourself for the sake of the gospel and everything that you have and what you do have give it away and what and what and what and if you get more bless others with it and 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 give your life as a sacrifice holy and pure Will, it could mean this, it could mean I could do that as a mom. Of course you can, I'm not saying otherwise, but at the same time, that's not what Jesus just said. He didn't say you can only do it as you're serving in the job, even though he will do that. But there is other places, there is another step, there is another bump where Jesus says, I want you to go to the nations. I have that word. When you were a little child and you went to a service and you got called out and prophesied over, that's actually what I have for you. And I believe that God wants to release destiny in this place. Come, come Holy Spirit, come, come. I'm gonna ask the Holy Spirit to come. I I love it when the Holy Spirit moves, but some of us in this place, we get so used to him moving a certain way that we go into a mode. Do not go into a mode. Let the Holy Spirit do whatever he wants to do, but do not go into a place that's comfortable right now. But Will, it makes for a good meeting. I'm not looking for a good meeting. I'm looking for transformation. (laughs) I I believe that when the Holy Spirit actually comes, things change. Things change. I I got marked when I was 17. I changed in a moment. Change in a moment. The Holy Spirit has something for you here today. Here's the only thing that I ask. Just be a sail in the wind of the Spirit. Whatever he has. And if he touches you, if he touches you, do not be quick to move. Be quick to listen but do not be quick to move. I'm going to ask him to come. Stick your hands up if you're hungry. Wow. See, the most beautiful thing is, (laughs) 
I already feel him here. I, I, it's almost like I don't have to ask him to come. He's literally already here. I feel the anointing. See, there's something when you give yourself and you run with him, not is it about, it's not about the altar call and it's not about the words I use. You know that prayer I pray, trust me? That's my heart. Trust me, Lord. He literally will take you. He'll take you where you're at right now. You don't deserve it, so don't tell him it. Don't tell him you don't deserve it. He already knows that you don't deserve it. You're not being holy by saying I don't deserve it. He's choosing you in the middle of you not deserving it. So just take it. Just receive. Come, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit. Father, do it today, God. Do it today, God. Do it today, God. Do it, do it, do it this morning, God. Do it in this place, God. Do it in this place, Holy Spirit. Father, I ask you to release the angels in this place with a stamp and a commissioning. Now, in Jesus' name. Double it now, now, in the name of Jesus. More, 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 more. I see you. Amazing grace, I feel your presence. Father, come. Do not pass us by. Do not pass me by, Lord Jesus. Do not pass me by, Lord Jesus. Come, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. More, Lord. Father, from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord, I ask for a release of your anointing. God, I ask for a release of your fire. God, I I'm not pacing nervously. I'm watching the Holy Spirit move. I get the best view in the house. Come, Holy Spirit. More, 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 Holy Spirit. More, more. Amazing grace. I feel you in this place. More, 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 Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More. Father, Father, do not pass us by. Lord, Lord, Jesus, Son of David, Lord, have mercy on us. Do, do not pass us by, God. Do not pass us by, God. Lord, not another year of, of claiming promises, God. Not another year of reading old prophecies, God. Lord, would you take hungry hearts in this place this morning? God, would you take hungry hearts, God? And would you take the sacrifice, God? Lord, 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 we don't get it. We don't understand it. But God, we want it. We want everything that you have. Come, Holy Spirit. More, more, more. In the name of Jesus, more, more. Now let the winds of your spirit blow in this place. Come, come. Come. More. More. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, more, more. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. 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 Sweetie, uh, in the black dress and the white sweater, right here. Come here. Come here. Very quickly, come here. More, more more, more. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. I need a catcher. More, more, more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Touch more. I see you ministering to divorcee, sweetie. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. More. More, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Even more, Lord. Father, release it now. Release it now. Sweet girl, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. If I call you out, don't hesitate. Right here. Close your eyes. More, Lord. 